What is up guys, from Sales Williams, aka The School Professor, here to educate you on health, fitness, and social well-being. And today, guys, we're gonna be talking about should you be training a muscle group two times a week or three times a week, or even more than that. So you guys have heard me say on this channel multiple times that, and no one's gonna disagree with this, no actual exercise physiologist or strength and conditioning specialist, nobody who's like, you know, not just some random YouTuber stating their opinion, nobody who understands the facts and research is gonna argue this. For natural lifters, you're really trying to focus on maximizing muscle growth. You need to be hitting each muscle group at least twice a week, period. That is just true across the board for natural lifters. Due to how the way protein synthesis works, where muscle group's only gonna grow about 24 to 48 hours after you've hit it, it makes no sense to only hit a muscle group once a week. If you train your chest on Monday and you only hit it on Mondays, let's say it grows to about Wednesday, that means you're still going, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, five days without any type of stimulation for growth. It just doesn't make sense for natural lifters to do that. However, you guys have also heard me say on this channel that one of the benefits of things like full body training is that you can, you know, have higher protein synthesis. Why? Because instead of just hitting a muscle group two times a week, if you're doing full body, you can hit a muscle group three times a week. Some people even four times a week. But recently, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, who you guys, you know, I've mentioned on this channel before, is pretty much one of the leading experts in hypertrophy, has come out with some new research um, pretty recently, basically discussing, like, you know, that it may, that there may not really be a point to hitting a muscle group more than twice a week. And unfortunately, a lot of you, I do mean a lot of you, have come asking me questions about this, and you've sort of taken it out of context. I'm assuming a lot of you have either just, like, you know, read a little summary of the research, or maybe you've heard another YouTuber talk about it who just said, oh, look, Dr. Brad said this, so look, you don't have to train it more than twice a week instead of actually going and looking at the research itself within context. So a couple of things you have to understand, guys, is one, with this field, like I said, there's certain principles that we know are kind of like, you know, absolute in the sense of like we know that they're true and pretty much have always been true things like you know progressive overload calories in versus calories out then there's certain things that are situational where when new research comes out we may realize oh we're wrong about this and like you know that can happen and even that dr brad schoenfeld himself has had moments where he's had to go back and correct something that he previously thought or said and a lot of you that's what you're confused by you're like but i've even seen some of his research where he talks about you know um training a muscle group three times a week and things like that you guys have heard me say that on this channel you've heard me talk about if it's a lacking muscle group you may want to hit it three or four times a week if you're already getting pretty good volume and then maybe just get more total weekly volume by hitting that lagging muscle group three or four times a week but this new research is kind of confusing you because you're like okay this is a, the lead expert so even though on this channel we talk about how you know it's not just based off the source or who it's coming from we talk about the validity of the information itself but dr brad is someone who's pretty good at like you know being pretty valid with the information he's putting out there so like what does this all mean so the first thing you guys have to understand is the context and what he's talking about basically in summary all the research is saying guys is that for um, the high end intermediate lifters and even advanced lifters often get to a point where they're doing so much total weekly volume for each muscle group with only two training sessions to where it may not benefit them to come in and do a third. But here's why. For one, we have to think about recovery. An inter a high end intermediate or advanced lifter is going to do a whole lot more total workload in a given training session than a beginner. Even if I have a beginner and um, an advanced lifter on the exact same program, let's say I have them on a percentage-based program, 70% of that beginner's max on a lift is going to be a lot less total workload than 70% of the advanced lifter's max on a given lift, right? Especially if I have them doing, say, like three sets of 10. So even though um, the work capacity of the advanced lifter is a lot higher, his rate of recovery is also gonna be a lot higher, but keep in mind, as we get stronger and lift for years and years, the amount of work that we can put out is always a lot higher than the amount of work we can recover from. So even though the advanced lifter's recovery is technically better, the beginner lifter doesn't have as much workload to recover from. So that beginner lifter is gonna be able to come in, you know, two more times that week, produce the same results, and that's gonna be good. Why? Protein synthesis, total weekly volume. But for an advanced lifter or a high and intermediate lifter, we have to consider the fact that after those two sessions for that muscle group, they may not be recovered enough to come in a third time to stimulate enough workload to even help produce any more growth, in which case it makes more sense for that lifter to just use that day to rest and recover so they can come back in next week and produce more total workload 
two more times for that week and they can effectively progressively overload rather than hindering that by trying to come in a third time not even doing enough to stimulate more growth because they're so gassed from the two previous time but still doing enough to where it's impacting their recovery because you're almost trying to like it's almost like trying to start your like trying to like drive your car on empty you've already given all you could for that week so maybe you need to like rest and refill and then go again for the next week However, this doesn't really apply to beginner intermediate lifters for the mere fact that once again, it comes down to total weekly volume, total workload. Beginners and even intermediate lifters on the lower end aren't producing so much workload during a given session, whether they're doing like, you know, um, full body push pull legs or whatever, upper lower, whatever it's what they're doing. You're not doing so much total workload on a muscle group to where you can't come in two more times and produce good workload that's gonna help you elevate more muscle growth. Because remember guys, that's what it always comes down to. It comes down to your total weekly volume, your total workload, and progressively overloading upon that workload. Those are the two most important factors when it comes to just the training aspect of muscle growth itself, is total workload and progressively overloading. You have a base amount of work you're doing and you're gradually building upon that, gradually doing a little bit more every time. In order to do that, you have to be able to recover from it. Once again, beginners and intermediates are gonna be able to recover from the workload they're producing because it's not as much workload as what the high intermediate or advanced lifters are doing. But this information doesn't negate the fact that it's still good and best and most optimal. Think about it, one piece of information doesn't suddenly just make years upon years of other information pointless. And keep in mind, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, that's why I say they look at context. If he were to be saying that, yeah, across the board, there's never a point for a lifter to train a muscle more than twice a week, period, whether you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, then I would I would definitely say that, well, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld is wrong. Keep in mind, guys, information is made valid by the information itself, not necessarily the personal source it comes from. Anybody can miss it. Even one of the lead experts in hypertrophy can miss it, but that's not what he's saying. That's why I say it's important to look at the research in context. He's basically saying if you're producing enough workload to where you're doing so much where you can recover from coming in three times a week, then you may not benefit from that. But like I said, if you're not a high intermediate or advanced lifter, that's usually not the case. And as I was saying, we have so much overwhelming research that shows and proves that for beginners, total body training, with focusing on compound movements and getting stronger like three times a week is the most optimal and effective way for them to grow. Like that's not up for debate it's a fact you if you now mind you like for psychological purposes if you enjoy bro splits or even a more optimal split like push pull legs or upper lower that's okay because at the end of the day it's about enjoying your training and being consistent that's gonna give you the best results but if we're talking about all factors being equal and you enjoy all of them equally, then yes, you're gonna be better, especially as a beginner with that total body training. Why? Because as we've talked about on this channel before, you can never separate building strength and building hypertrophy. There's always overlap, they're always connected. Now, you get to a point as you become more advanced where you can focus more on one than the other, but they still overlap. And it's especially true for beginners. Pretty much as a beginner, if you're not getting stronger, you're not building muscle. If you're not building muscle, you're not getting stronger. So. That's something else we have to keep in mind with this research. This is talking just about hypertrophy alone. We're not talking about the benefits of higher frequency training for things like strength, because we that, that's pretty you know common sense. We don't have to really get into the deep science about it. It's the mere fact that if you want to get better at something, you need to do it more often. So if you're trying to get stronger on the squat, bench, deadlift, weighted chips, whatever it is, doing working on that movement or variations of that movement even with different rep schemes you know three or four times a week it's going to be more beneficial than only working on that movement maybe once or twice a week now mind you if you're able to just do a whole lot of practice of that movement in one day then that's great but it's just a lot easier if you're able to do it through like just higher frequency training it helps you save you time it helps you with recovery everything like that so keeping that in mind for beginners since strength and hypertrophy are that's probably the point where they're the most connected like pretty much neck and neck then higher frequency training where you're hitting everything three times a week is just going to be better not only for your overall muscle growth but for your strength which is only going to help with your muscle growth but like i said what he's saying makes sense when we're looking at like really advanced lifters and i think a couple of great examples someone who does like full body and someone who does more like the body part splits um would be um alex mouth for destiny and then you know my boy chris jones like that's that those are great examples so alex only trains two times a week full body he has his volume day and his intensity day but on both of those days it's a lot of workload so he's training full body he's only in the gym twice a week but he's hitting each muscle group twice a week we have someone like chris jones who does like you know his his body parts splits where it's like you know four days on one day off sometimes he does do things like push pull legs um or his class physique programming where same thing he's in the gym more days a week but he's still hitting each muscle group only about like 
twice a week. Whereas Alex is doing it all in two days, he's doing it, you know, like, you know, each month like twice a week over like whatever programming that he's doing at that time. But they're both great examples of advanced lifters doing a whole lot of workload, doing a, moving a whole lot of weight for a whole lot of sets and reps. And because of that, it's probably wouldn't do, for example, it probably wouldn't do Alex much benefit at this point if he threw in a, a third day. At one point he was, but even, I, I believe he's mentioned on his channel, he's seen the benefits of what's going on since he started doing it twice a day. He recovers a lot better and can put more work and energy into those two days because he's doing so much workload because of how strong he is and how much weight he's moving, the amount of total weekly volume he's doing. And the same thing with Chris. So those are just two examples where like this would really apply what Dr. Brad is talking about would really apply to them. Like it probably wouldn't do them a benefit to hit those muscle groups a third day because they're gonna be so gassed where they can't do enough workload to produce more growth. They're just gonna tire themselves out some more and impede the recovery. But for the most of you watching this, that doesn't apply to you. Most of you aren't necessarily like high intermediate lifters or advanced lifters. And if you are, that's great. You know, take that information and apply it to yourself. But a lot of you who are beginners or the low intermediate lifters, you're still gonna get plenty of benefits from hitting a muscle group three times a week, three or four times a week if it's a lagging muscle group. There's overwhelming amounts of research to prove this. We know this for a fact. It's gonna help, it's gonna benefit you. And even for some of you who are maybe on the higher intermediate level or an advanced level lifter, keep this in mind too. How much volume are you doing per session? You may be someone who you just don't like to train extremely high volume. You like doing lower volume sessions multiple times a week to where you get the same amount of total weekly volume as somebody who maybe trains a muscle group less frequently, but they do higher volume sessions. And that's okay too, in which case keep training three or four times a week. That's the big thing, guys. You have to be able to look at this research and it doesn't do any good to look at research and just read it and kind of know what it's saying. You have to understand how to best apply it to yourself. And that's something I'm really trying to get you guys to learn to do with this channel. Don't just take what I'm saying and be like, oh cool, I learned something new. Figure out the best way you can apply it to your training. It makes me so happy when I get, you know, um, messages on Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, emails. Well, hey man, I saw your video over this. I started doing this and applied it, and I've seen, you know, all kinds of gains. I've seen progression. Like, oh, I'm, I'm bulking so much easier now, cutting so much easier. That's the best thing to do, guys. This information is kind of pointless if you don't actually learn how to properly apply it to yourself. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I hope that I explained everything. I hope that kind of clears things up on, um, oh, should I still train like, you know, three times a week since Dr. Brad said, you know, keep in mind context, guys. Context, 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 it matters. But yeah, that's it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.